Welcome to Heartcraft Paper. My name is Monica. It's time once again for the Crafter's Castle Challenge. Today I'm going to be using the Harvest Fair digital set from TaylorMade Cards for You. This set has several images. It includes this gingham paper. This is an eight and a half by 11 print. Then you have a pumpkin and sunflower. Finally, you have a double sunflower. All three of these are eight and a half by 11. Next, you have ephemera. There are two sheets. This one here has a guest check, a little envelope pocket, and a tag. The next set of ephemera has five stamps at the top, a postcard, one harvest fair ticket, three popcorn tickets, and an index card. All right, we're now ready to get crafting. I have everything printed and cut out using my Cricut. I didn't post it because of the time constraints, but here I have the first one, which is a little popcorn tickets, and I might use that as a carrier. The next one I have is this little pocket. And I love the scene of the girl in the orchard picking from the tree. Um, it just seems very fall-like for me. And all you have to do is take these little tabs, fold it over, and you're set. And again, you know, the scene is very, very beautiful. I also printed out the guest checklist as it is. Um, because this particular thing is just beautiful as is just for ephemera. I love the apples, a little apple pie on it. And then I used it to make a little envelope in Cricut. You can simply place it right on top and flatten it out. Next, I cut out the five stamps and they're absolutely beautiful. The colors, the vintage feel that you get to it. You get a um, little girl in the field, you get two balloons, you get a whole harvest basket, as well as a uh, fall tree. So these are really, really very nice, just as is. And that to me is kind of like a gift for ephemera. And the harvest fair ticket, I absolutely love how beautiful the pictures are so light on it and um, creates a really nice effect. Here is another of the ephemera, which is the actual tag itself. And I'm gonna utilize the tag just as is. The postcard with the fall tree. Again, I use that to make an envelope utilizing my Cricut. And then I also created um, some six by nines and I added in all the images right on top just to kind of create my own print and I also did that for the backing now here I have some index cards I use this um, wheat index card in order to create the other ones utilizing the digital paper that came with the pack Again, this was done in Cricut. And as you can see, um, I did make six of these because these would be kind of a good little gift to give together just as is. I mean, I love some of these because you can totally make these. Now I did use the images again to make a front and back. And these are gonna go right onto my clipboard. Now, typically I would paint my clipboard but I'm gonna leave it as is just because the color here for the brown just matches the fall theme so well. So we're not gonna do anything with that right now. So here you have the first, and this is going to be the front of my clipboard because I like the little girl that's sitting on there. And the edges are perfect, it fits fine. Um, here, let me show you on the back. This sits perfectly onto the six by nine. Now the corners do peek out a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to fix that as we go. And I just want to make sure that everything just kind of fits here. And this is the front. This is the one that I want to make sure that shows because of the little girl. And this is the back. Okay, so here I have some Mod Podge. This is the Matte Matte Mate and this is gonna go over the whole entire clipboard. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use my uh, corner rounder, and this has got a little one, and then you flip this over, it's got a larger one. 
So I'm not necessarily sure which one I want to use, but I think we'll start with the smaller one and then we'll test it out and see how that looks. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good, but it does need to be uh, trimmed a little bit more. Let's go ahead and use the larger one and see how well that works. Once we get the corner rounded, we're gonna go ahead and check this out. I wanna make sure that this sits perfectly on there and that looks perfect. I think this is the right fit for this particular edging. So let's go ahead and get these corners rounded and then we'll go ahead and start creating. All right, I now have my Mod Podge ready to go and we're gonna cover up the back of this clipboard. This particular Mod Podge is called Matte Matte Mate. You wanna make sure that you are generous with this particular glue all the way across the chipboard or the um, MDF on the clipboard will actually soak up quite a bit and just dry it out. So you really want to be generous. And usually the way that I cover this is I cover first in one direction and then I'll go across again in the next. All right, we're now ready to put down our image. I'm picking the back, which is the guest checklist. And you wanna make sure you're careful when lining this up. The good thing about this is that the glue is wet, so you can simply lift this off if it's not exactly right. And as you can see, I'm trying to take my time with this. And still, even then, I got a little bit off. So I think that looks about right. I just wanna come in with my speedball roller and kind of press that down, make sure all the bubbles are out from in between the paper and the clipboard. Now I'm pressing this down firmly just because of my own peace of mind, but we are now ready to start working the front. Here is my image for the front. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line this up into the clipboard so I know where I need to cut around this back section so that my image can pull all the way flush to the edge. Using a pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and demarcate on the sides here. So that way I know where I need to cut down and into my printout. I just wanna make sure that I make a nice clear line. Using a ruler, I'm going to bring that in to measure out where I need to cut. Now this is about a half inch um, if you're looking at it from the top. Now initially I had done a one and a half inch and that was my error and you'll see later on how I fixed that, but it is a half inch from the edge. Okay, I just wanna test this to make sure that it fits. Now again, it would be a half inch from the edge, not the full one and a half that I made here. As you can see, it is just at that very clip itself instead of the backing of the clip, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that. Um, I accidentally went through and still clipped the one and a half, but I'll show you how I'm gonna fix that. As you can see, this sits nice and flush. I really like the look of how it is on the front, but except for the cutout that I made and that little error, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that little piece that I cut out, trim it down so that's about half an inch, and then fit that right back in. So I've started adding glue to the front of my clipboard and you'll notice that I'm being careful here because of the actual clip. I'm trying to keep that nice and open. And then I'm gonna set in that little piece right back on. And as you can see, I trimmed it down to half an inch. So that way it kind of matches and makes a little puzzle piece. Once I'm done here, I'm gonna cover up that little clip 
with a bit of washi tape to make sure that it is nice and covered. I don't want it to get a lot of glue all over the place. The one thing with this part though is your hand can get a little bit tired of holding that clip open. So you're gonna wanna work quickly in order to make sure that you cover enough of the area as quick as possible. All right, ready to set down our image right flush to the back there. And I love, 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 love that little girl on there. I mean, she's adorable. And I just wanna make sure I line this up fairly well. Now here, I'm gonna come back in with a little piece of washi tape, just so that way any glue that was on the clip does not adhere down onto my paper. And I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Once it's dry, then I'll go ahead and remove that washi tape. Working some of the items that I'm gonna be placing onto my loaded clipboard. The first that I'm gonna work are the envelopes, just because they do require some drying time and they're going to have some glue on the tabs. So might as well work these first. These first set of envelopes are the set that I created utilizing uh, Cricut Design Space so that I could use some of the imagery from the digital set on it. And I love how these look, they're amazing. Uh, the images that came with this set are stunning. Moving right along, we now have the little pocket that comes with the digital image set. Simply fold along the line that you see there and that is for the tabs, it does come that way. You'll fold over and crease the tabs, then you'll also fold over and crease the major pocket image. Once you have that ready, all you have to do is glue this down. And this is what I like about this particular pocket. It's so easy. Now you've probably already noticed that two of these have flaps. Now, how am I gonna keep those closed? I'm gonna use a little bit of Velcro. I have these self-adhesive Velcro squares and I just quartered one up and that's going to sit right onto that little flap tab and that will be my closure. To give this a little test. The first time, hold down that little Velcro piece and then you'll be able to easily go back and forth just to make sure that it's adhered properly. Okay, so here I have the larger pieces of ephemera that I'm gonna be using, and I'm gonna bring out my crocodile. I want to hole punch this little tag that we have here. Well, it's not quite so little, but I wanna use this in my pocket. For this particular tag, I have a beautiful moss green crinkle binding tape that I really want to use for this. I also have some brown twine that I'm also gonna be utilizing as well as some cream twine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a length of the twine. I'd say it's about maybe a good eight inches or so. I'm gonna fold that in half and then I'm gonna utilize the crinkle binding in order to make a little bow. So for that, I'm going to need just a small, maybe a, about four or five inches worth. First, I'm gonna fold the twine in half, just like so, and then I am going to go ahead and cut it right in half. And that will be fed right through the hole of my tag. As for the crinkle binding, initially I just wanted to tie it around the twine, but I figured that that would just kind of slip off. So as I started tying, I figured, no, that might not be the best solution. So I undid it and then I looped it right underneath the actual twine looping. This way it got stuck and it wouldn't move around. So I'm just gonna thread that through and then I'm gonna tie a simple bow. Look how fabulous that looks. I like the crinkle binding and just how well that kind of goes in with a more vintage feel. 
So this is gonna be what's going to sit right into that little pocket. And I like that you can utilize this if you want for um, a card and just set something in. Um, you can utilize these little ephemeras as well that are gonna go into the pocket and it's just kind of a carrier for these little gifts. You can use them however which way you want. Okay, so here I have the little pocket that I made with the um, guest check. And what I'm gonna set in there are these little stamps that are so adorable. Um, I just think of them as ephemera. You can use them with some foam tape, but we're gonna hole punch this and kind of repeat the process that we did with our tag. I've already inserted the little stamps into the pocket but now I'm just gonna add a few more items. I have some pearl embellishments that would fit perfectly there. And I also have some nice fall themed sequins. So to this, I wanted to add some washi tape and I figured that these little popcorn tickets, aside from just ephemera, can also act as a carrier for the washi tape. I have some fall inspired washi tape that I think any person receiving this loaded clipboard would absolutely love. This makes a very nice trading gift, an idea for a crafters event, or a gift for the hostess, maybe someone who actually loves craft crafting would love to receive a gift like this. So here's a closer look at that washi. I just love the patterns of these. So all I have left are the index cards and the other envelopes. So for this particular set, I'm gonna go ahead and hole punch these and set them together as a set. I mean, these are perfect for using for ideas, maybe recipes, um, they can be used as ephemera, they can be used as decorations on a card. So it really does depend on what you want to use. So I'm just gonna simply hole punch the corner and then just feed it onto a binder ring. So for this little pocket, I cut out another set of stamps just because they're really adorable and cute and can be used in so many different ways. I'm just gonna insert those into the little pocket. And this is gonna be another of my elements for this loaded clipboard. Now you're probably thinking, well, a loaded clipboard, what does that mean? Well, all these little items that you see here can be used as decorations and provided as a gift. So that's basically what it means. You're loading up this clipboard with different items to be able to use by the participant or the recipient. I'm gonna clip together my index cards and this little pocket tag. I wanna make sure that they don't kind of come apart and this is a great way to do it since it already has a hole in it. So what I like to do with these items is use the clipboard itself kind of as a holder. Um, right now, I still have the washi tape, so it's time to remove that. And this really helps because if there was any um, glue that was still there, it would help to kind of keep that, my paper safe. I almost forgot, I wanted to add in some twine. I have an orange and a brown twine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to my washi carrier. I'm just gonna wind it around and fill that up. Now it's time to just arrange these how I would like to have them fit. I played around with these a little bit just because of the thickness of some of the paper or the items that I had in order to make sure that I got it to the right fit. Um, initially, I wanted to make sure that the clip kind of held everything in place, but I think this kind of worked. Um, let's go ahead and try this again because it didn't feel too right. I wanted to use this particular ribbon uh, for it and I think that worked in holding it well in place. And look how lovely this looks. You get all the color, you have all these little gifts 
and anyone who's receiving this who's a crafter will absolutely love to get something like this. Well, thanks for visiting. You'll find the link to the next video in the description below. Don't forget to visit the Crafter's Castle blog. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe. Visit the blog for more information at www.hardcraftpaper.com. Thanks for watching Hardcraft Paper.